start. So today's um, October 5th, um, 2021. This is the District Advisory Board meeting presented of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting might do so in the following manner via Zoom on the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and the public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. So the first item on the agenda is public comment and there we have one participant, one attendee, if wants to make a public comment. Um, okay, I'm letting him in the room. Okay, you're in the room, okay. Freddie. <clears throat> is it me? It's yes. Right. Okay, I just have a question. What is the um, what is the going to be the result of tonight's meeting? I mean, what if you make a, a choice? What does that choice mean? Does it go? Where does it go after tonight? So I can answer after tonight. Um, next Tuesday, we need next Wednesday. We need to submit to the town council uh, a report and the proposed map for the town council to vote on it before. Um, so they could have two meetings scheduled to discuss the, the map and then it goes to the state. Once the town council approves it, it goes to the state. It has to be at the state before October 30th. So there are two meetings scheduled to discuss yes. maps. Is this one of those two meetings? And then you, and then the next one is next Wednesday night. Is that no? So no. we vote. We choose one of the maps, one of our, our final product, okay. and then we submit it to the town council. The town council has to approve the map. They okay. have two meetings on October 18 and October 25th. Um, so what you choose tonight will be voted on by town council. Yes. And there will be no no more revisions after tonight. I mean, they could request no, for revisions from us. Well, they could say they could say that they won't approve them or something, okay. and that they. I mean, I don't know what how the council will respond. The okay. council's agenda is pretty full, but it, it's okay. up to the council to have a version of the map that they a majority of the council members will approve. So hopefully, okay. whatever we give them will meet that criteria, and they won't ask us for too much more. Thank you. If there's no other public comment, we can move for the next um, item that is um, the approve the meetings. So we have two uh, meetings approved. Yes, Tracy. The so issue. I guess I would just suggest, especially with Marilyn not knowing how okay. long she can, can we just, I mean, minutes are, I love minutes yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything, but like, okay, let's, yes. just, let's get to the heart of the meeting and get that done. Okay, <laughs> so I have, uh, let's change the order. So there's two things I wanted to, um, so the next item would be to items not anticipated in the last 48 hours. And I wanted to um, uh, bring in two things. One was the exchange of emails that you saw I submitted uh, regarding um, the town council proposal of having um, Mike and Dee be, be promoted to voting members to help us with the quorum. Um, I, as I didn't, we couldn't discuss it as a group because we were not meeting. As a personal said, I didn't think that was right. Um, it was setting some precedents that I, I didn't feel comfortable. That's why I requested everybody uh, to confirm quorum so that to make sure that we would have quorum and we could proceed without having that uh, being voted in the town council. So in the end, it was withdrawn in the town council. Um, but I wanted to, because there was, there had been a previous proposal, a informal proposal that maybe to help us make sure that we had quorum was to have, to reduce the number of the members to seven uh, after the last resignation to make sure that we had quorum and we continue to work. Um, but that went against the charter, the charter required non-voters. So this was the proposal to stop the gap, but I personally didn't see 
uh, it was set in precedence. Mike is not a resident of Amherst um, and he's a staff. Um, the, there were conflict of interest and conflicts that I saw. Um, and since we could have quorum, um, I didn't see the end in the news. Okay. So that's why I wanted to, to put it a little bit in context. And then the other announcement was um, you also that Craig Meadows resigned after last meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. um, there was, I think there was some, I think other people tried to put the name forward, as Tracy mentioned, to try to offer the service yesterday and they were um, not accepted at this late stage. Um, but okay. So that, that's the updates on the member composition. Anybody has any questions about this? No. No? Okay. Um, no, I just want to, if I could, I just want to say, I think that's, that was a very difficult decision, Irene, um, faced with those choices in the timeline. And I think as a chair, uh, from my vantage point, you made, uh, good clear decision so thank you for leading in that respect okay thank you um the other quick announcement is that um last week and it's on the package we received a map from the state within the 11 precincts and um that created a moment of panic <laughs> um because we said we have 10 uh, and then they said, call us. Okay, we call and then they said, oh, we weren't able to create the 10 precincts, but we shared the maps that we had and they say they, don't, they didn't see any much problems with the maps that we have um, with the shape and they've been so close to 4,000, but it was a, maybe half an hour of panic uh, <laughs> on our side because when they say call us, um, we didn't know what was going on. So they said, 10 precinct was okay. And they were impressed that we had so many maps that did fit um, the parameters, uh, being under 4,000, being within 5% and with the shapes, not continuous shapes. So that was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so that was the other announcement. And since, um, Marlene is still here. Hopefully we don't lose her. I wanted to propose for an, um, whether people would be willing to create working groups um, for the next week, because we need to work. We're gonna be work, working on the, on the map and voting on the map, but afterwards we need to make the presentation for the council and the final report. So I want to know if people would volunteer to work in one or the other, have two, maybe two working groups tackling those two things so that we make sure that we don't have problems with the open meeting law and we have collaboration with them. Sure. Tracy? Um, so I just have a comment about the presentation. As I said, I had started drafting a slide that just from the presentation I gave to the League of Women Voters Steering Committee, but I noticed that the council president's email to us, right? It said that we needed to submit our report by next, whatever it is, next Wednesday, like yeah. midday. And that we could also submit a presentation at that time if we so chose. I, I feel like we could do the presentation in that time frame too, but I don't really think it's necessary that we okay. could always provide the presentation even just okay. like a few days before the presentation or even after the presentation, there's no need that they need to see that. That's, it's just a Reader's Digest version of the report. And so okay. I think we just put our priorities on the report and okay. we can revisit the presentation as needed. Okay, so do I have volunteers for uh, the report? Sure. Peggy? Yeah. Marilyn? Oh, yeah, it, I, I have a question though. Is yes. this, this would be, done electronically like via zoom no face to face yes okay um tracy i mean i'm happy to work on sections of it um okay so i mean if there's ways we can split it up that makes sense and i think we can also keep in mind right that the last report the 
the 2011 DAB that the report was only like three or four pages. So I don't think we need to do something extensive. Though I think there are, particularly since we're so close to 4,000, I think it would be nice to have a little bit of narrative about yeah. 40,000, about like 10 verse 15 and some of those little things. Okay. But. Yeah. Martin? Um, I was going to say, I think both the drafts of the report and the presentation look pretty close to me. I think that there's going to be some tweaking, but most of the substance is already there, unless there's something that we decide to add tonight. But I, based on what I saw from the last time, I, I would say it's adequate. Okay. Yeah, so. no, I, I know, but uh, um, I've, I'm the non-native ah. English speaker, um, so my English is not the best. Um, so I appreciate if somebody, I took a swing after you corrected things from last time, I added some things and I think it, I added comments um, Tracy added some comments and Peggy added some comments. Um, so, I, but I think it needs an, another round of, of editing. And I think that what it needs now is, I mean, there may be a the little content. stuff, but it's mostly grammatical and, you know, just sentence construction, things like that. But I don't, I think in terms of the substance, most of it is there. Okay. Unless anyone, you know, unless people have other recommendations. Um, if you, what I'm hearing is, um, I think after the map today, uh, what we chose, we're going to have to put the narrative and how we, that is going to be a section that needs to be written. The decision and based uh, the justification of choose which one do we choose? That's one section that needs support. Um, and probably needs here and there, there might be some extra support. I mean, for example, in the presentation on the slide deck, um, you know, most of our report, most of it didn't focus on the decision that we made. You know, like it, it focused on the moments like up to the decision and the process. And so, um, I mean, I do. I think it is important. Maybe we could talk about sort of our time frame and you know what what we would also expect for next meeting too, that um, but just in terms of, um, I mean, we could even talk now before we go down a map about sort of how we want to split up work on the report if we do want to have a few different groups looking at different aspects of it. And then we could vote on the map, but <clears throat> I mean, I think, we, I think as long as people are, com are okay deciding on having working groups, I would like to move on and continue on the packet because I'm, I'm scared that we might lose Marilyn and I think okay, she sure. should be there for the, the <clears throat> so we're having the agenda is a little bit hopscotch today, but I, I would like her to be present and not lose her. Definitely. But at least we have an agreement with forming working groups and it can be, okay. Um, in, According to agenda with the, the, is there any other announcement besides the ones that we've been talking? No. Uh, the packet material that is non um, map related, um, there is a lot of information. So we got information from the state of what has to be submitted and how and what's the process and sample vote everything is in there and I think we should all have a look before next meeting to make sure we dot the I's and have the instructions. One important piece of information that they provided us, the state, is that they can build the construction. So that's something that we all are going to have to work before next time. Um, if we give them the map that is voted today, they can build for us the narrative of the, uh, the borders of each precinct. But they, what they say is that the software is not perfect. So we have to make sure that the description matches the map. So we're gonna have to go prison by prison looking at the description and the map. We, I think my understanding is that if we send the map um, tomorrow, they were hoping to have it to us by Friday um, or before that so that we can correct it before next meeting and include it in the package material. Yes, Tracy. 
Um, so do we have to have that full description prepared before we submit whatever we're submitting to the council on the 13th? Because I guess part of me is thinking, what if the council members or some particular council members want to see some changes? And so, I, I mean, I think it's really great that the state's going to do it. it. It seems like the council would be able to discuss it without those legal descriptions of the boundaries. I think it would be good to have the, from my point of view, I think it's good to have to make sure that it's clear which, what are the boundaries that is sometimes it's a stream, maybe a, a, a stream. I think it puts some clarifications. Um, oh, definitely. But I'm just thinking about just about the timing of it. And I, yeah. I would not be surprised if council members ask for some changes here and there or yeah. whatever. So. I think a, a one important thing <laughs> that we have to transmit in the document is that a simple change is not a simple change in this case. I think that's, I think, an important thing and not everybody realizes that um, changing one line here might mean changing 60 or 70 other things because the numbers are not, I can take a one from here, another one from the other side because- And they don't balance, right? I mean, they don't like balance. Some, yeah. Um, the, I mean, the other thing we can convey too is that the state, you know, based on your phone calls that, you and Sue and Mike have had is that the state is feeling pretty comfortable with what we've done already and that they don't see problems with it. So, you know, if one of the council's goals is to like check the boxes and get into the state and things, you know, we don't need to, hopefully maybe think, we don't have to do a lot, but just to kind of convey that the state is happy with what we've done. And I think based on the <coughs> email that Sue got, I think the instruction, the suggestion is to have the map process as soon as possible. That was my understanding of the message about the law changing. That's correct. One from Michelle Tassinari, yes. Yes, yeah. yes that, yeah. that's that's correct. We wanna get this um, moving as fast as possible because I don't know if people saw that email. I, I don't even know the name of the attachment, but basically something was just signed by Governor Baker uh, last week that could if if communities wait too long, it could shift in the order of uh, getting their maps approved by the LEDRC. Um, so we want if we we're happy with our stuff, we should get it submitted as soon as we can. Okay. But do um, we still have the ability once we do this? Do we have the ability to change it even after we you know make a decision on submitting it? That was my understanding. I read it quickly, but my understanding was that we still have some flexibility if we do want to decide it for whatever reason that we want to change it. My understanding is we can change it if the LEDRC says that there's a problem with it. And then we only, and we have the, we have seven days if they told us that there is an issue with, with the map that we submitted, we have seven days to fix it and get it back to them. Um, otherwise they're gonna make their own changes. But I believe once the map is submitted to the state that that is the only opportunity to change it is if they have an issue. That was my reading as well, Marilyn. I will go with your reading, thank you. Any other comments that people want to make about the non-map material on the package? No? So um, we should look at the maps. And the question I have is a procedure, how do we go about discarding maps? What are our basic principles? Because we have to finalize and settle on one map. I know we all like our maps and we all have our favorites, but we have to settle on one map. Yes, Marilyn. Um, I was looking at the th three maps, uh, map one, version five, map one, version four, scenarios one and two. And when I looked at version one of um, map one, version four, scenario one, I looked at the totals of the population totals for districts three and five, and I think the math is wrong because they came in identical to scenario two. 
and the and clearly, I mean the the combination of precincts and districts is different. So when I added it up, I had district three rather than seventy nine seventy five was seventy nine ten, and district five was seventy seven sixty two. Although the active registered voters was correct. It's possible I made a mistake in creating that, that graph. I can double check that. Okay, so as I said, it's the numbers, or I, I looked at the numbers and I said, how can that be? They, someone did a really good job, but- it, it's, um, pos it's very possible that it's incorrect. I, I, okay. will, I will double check that right now. Okay. Oh, and I know too, for the presentation I had worked on and some of the numbers I've mentioned to people, I do, I definitely do want to double check all of our adding and subtracting and stuff because people will notice it. So, but that's great to look it over. Okay. So, um, shall we go around? Um, yeah, Tracy. So could we, could we, I don't, I don't know the order for this, but could we maybe briefly discuss that latest version that uh, Peggy submitted? Sure. Just, you know, because we didn't have a chance to talk about it at the meeting and I, you know, she can either speak to it or we can also kind of discuss our thoughts on that. And if, if people, how people feel about potentially like substituting that for some of the other options. Peggy, you want to, Marilyn? Um. Well, unless, unless Peggy wants to speak first. Do you have anything you want to say, Peggy? Um, well, I would, I would speak to those maps. I mean, we have three versions of one map and we have one version of another map. And then we also have now Irena's updated version. Of I, yeah, so that so, one, I, I can clarify why I put that one. It was just to see about balance. I, I'm yeah. not proposing to move it forward, okay. but it was just about how could because that one how the shape is not it would need work it was about which numbers could how compact yep. could we get the numbers that was my it was a mm -hmm. bringing so, idea wait please no go ahead so what i would propose inter is to at least eliminate two of the three map one versions Right, we have three now, three map ones and one map three, and I think we should eliminate two of the map ones so that we are looking at two maps as a group, and then we choose. So I would speak to that, but go ahead, Tracy. So I have one question just to clarify. So my understanding, you know, based on the synopsis I heard about the the call that. I mean, you and Sue and uh, Mike had with the state is that even though the rules say that we need to submit the map that has precincts and wards, that the staff was telling you that they really just care about the precincts, like the boundaries of the precincts. And so in that case, two of our map ones, version four, so those are the same map and that it sounded like we can submit the map that's only precinct based and not district based to the state. And that the decision about the grouping of the districts would be a decision that might be just like in the council's hands and wouldn't have to get state approval as well. Is that the understanding? No. Okay. It says that we have to what they what they require on the list, it has to they require precinct and wards or districts. Okay. On the on the tabulated uh, if you right. read on no. the requirements. I, understand. I agree. They they require both things. And, and then another thing is just in terms of the maps um, that we choose not to recommend, um, a part of me wonders about um, which of those maps we want to, if any, that we still want to share with the council as the ones that we discarded. I, because I kind of, I sort of think that we should do that just when, when I've heard that council debate, you know, things in there like option A or option B or something. And I think that some council members will ask for that information. I mean, we have provided in our packets. So maybe we don't provide a copy of that map, but we could still include some of the tables that show some of the maps that we chose not to go with or something. Okay. Just because uh, I think those questions will come up. Okay. So. Marilyn, uh, Joseph, and then I have a comment. So I was, I mean, I was looking at the map, maps and I think I really, what I like about is map one version five, which is Peggy's latest is that it has 
in terms of distribution of active registers, registered voters, it probably does the best at repre you know, representing the numbers as best we can given the combinations of precincts, but I would vote for that one. Um, okay. Because I, you know, it's it, it, it's never going to be balanced, but I think it reduces the high end and increases the low end, even though we still have quite a range of registered voters. So Joseph, thanks, Marlene. Um, I just wanted to speak to Tracy's point about submitting more than one map to the town council. Um, although I think like in concept that would be a good idea i think what irene said early in the meeting about how i think giving them a lot of or giving them more than one map that's like not the map we're submitting as a proposal is going to make certain there's a possibility that certain council members will see something on one map and be like i like this little tiny like change can we put this on this map and then it's sort of my it's like we can't sort of do that so i feel like if we stay focus with like our one map that we choose um we should give that to the town council as like this is what we've decided on like we're we're open to your insights but like this is like what yeah okay okay i'm gonna skip uh, peggy and then tracy Wait, didn't you have a comment you no mine was about presentations that this traditional uh, you usually have many slides that you you create, but expecting the questions asked. <laughs> That's a good you point. Put, Actually, you don't put all the information up front. You always no, it's true. you you know the questions are going to be coming, and you have them as extra, but so that you can answer questions. That was a silly comment. That was Peggy. Okay, so what I want to say is I'd be happy to speak to the three versions of the map, the one that I just introduced plus the other two, um, if people would feel that is helpful. Um, the alternative is to just go around, like Marilyn just expressed her preferences for map, that would be another option is we could just go around and sort of talk about the pros and cons or pluses and minuses of each map and where we where we might, um, what we might think. And I would be interested in hearing also from in, if we do that from our three non-voting members, because I really think um, you all have a very, um, a perspective that I would really appreciate. So that's all. So Tracy and Marilyn. Oh, um, so I was just gonna comment that I will back off my suggestion about including all the maps. I mean, the maps are available in our packets. We did make them available to the public. I would still, you know, to Rene's point, I, I do think it's good for us to have some of these tables that do show the different options because that's a justification. Like I think when we make a recommendation, we will want to justify the one we picked. And in that vein, I wouldn't necessarily just, you know, show, you know, go forth with like two options, but maybe like three options or whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, the reason the three options that we had as of last meeting before Piggy created the new map, right? So there's the two versions of map one um, and they are basically the same. They're just, they just have the different pairing of the precincts. And one of those pairings is the current pairing, which is something I think that certain people will care about. And then one is our preferred, well, my preferred pairing <laughs> of those two options. And then there was that other map, which is like much different. So I personally like the idea of just like having those three. And then of course we will vote on one of those. And um, well, I mean, I looked over Peggy's map and the changes that were made and I, I prefer the map one version four over map five, the version five. I don't like um, two being shrunk more. Like I do, I mean, I live in a tiny, tiny precinct myself, but I think it's you know better when we have slightly larger precincts um, and you do connect like more of the neighborhood. And I didn't see a lot of benefit. Um, it does make a, the map a little more like stick out in terms of that one dorm area. Um, and I, I was concerned about some of the other little changes too. I mean, there, I think the whole thing changed about like 15 precincts. Um, I mean, 15 census blocks, but I think I would have just left the map the way it was. So personally, but I appreciate all of Peggy's work looking at the map. 
Okay, Marilyn. Sorry if I'm looking at a side. I That's have okay. another. Moment. I was. Um, my only comment is that I think we do have to zero in on one map because that will influence the report. You know, we're, yeah. gonna, we're trying to rationalize or present a rationale for what why we selected a specific map. So I think we really do need to decide on what our first choice would be. And just mention that there are other cho there were other choices, but this is the consensus of the group. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have a suggestion. So I think if we go around, um, we could all choose and try to see if any of the maps at this point can be eliminated. And what I've been hearing so far is that one map one version four scenario two is one of the not preferred ones. Right, that's what I've been hearing so far. Oh. Yes, scenario oh, two is the two. current precinct pairing. Oh, that's your preferred, Tracy? You're muted. The reason I created that oh. map was just oh. because it's the current precinct pairing. That's why that's okay. why it even was out there. Um, but that is that is my least preferred map of any oh. of our options. Okay, I think so. if we go around, I think, from I, I that's one way to go instead of the prefer is the one that we want to discard first and I think <laughs> <laughs> maybe by let's do by discarding I, I, I think for me it's also that one I don't know if yeah. everybody likewise Marilyn, Peggy Joseph, likewise yeah Joseph uh, I agree the, as well Marilyn yeah. you would agree to discard that one my one version for this scenario Two? Probably. Okay. It's close to five. Yes. Um, so I'm closing that one on my computer. So, uh, <laughs> um, so one, um, so now we are left with map one version four scenario one, map one version five, and map three version two. Right. That's one. Is, is there anybody that wants to defend and vote for keeping? Because I already heard two people that are interested in map one version five and map one version four. So is somebody interested in keeping map three version two? Map no. three version two has zero registered voters in precinct nine. Is that correct? That's correct because it's all dorms. It's so that, you know, when you look at it from an election or running on election standpoint, we still have to staff that polling place. We still have to pay all those costs and there are no registered voters. But there will, but there will, <laughs> be, will be, but there will be with the students, somebody will register from the dorms like in advance of the election now. I know, but what, what, 20 people and they don't, they only come out in the presidentials and, you know, very few come out in the other elections. So, so you are con you're concerned with that map with um, that the state might reject it because it has zero registered voters? No, the state oh. won't consider that. Oh, of course. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just thinking about it from running an election point of view and going to all that work to staff a precinct and paying for it. And then nobody comes out to vote. But, but I guess, Sue, one question I have is, uh, is, you know, in some of the other maps too, or like currently, right, we have um, precincts that have a small number of voters, like 300 voters or 400 voters. And, mm -hmm. you know, both all these other maps too, they still have those as well. So, um, I mean, some of those precincts, you could have almost no turnout too. <laughs> I just, but yeah. I but. think historically, Tracy, look in one of the elections, there were 27 votes in precinct three or precinct one in one of the elections. I mean, some of the, I mean, I know I've worked at the Cape Cod Lounge for like the whole day and we've literally had maybe two dozen voters at the most and, and we staffed it the whole day. Like to Oh, that was, that was back when there were sub precincts, right? But had to no, be sub precincts. It might have even, even been 10. I think we, I don't know. Okay. But anyway. Okay. So it doesn't 
purpose of time. Peggy, you said a comment. Um, so the qu the question on the table is: Are we defending? Do we want to talk? We're talking about map three. Yes. Is that right. Okay. I just so want to say that what I want to say about this map is that there are a lot of things I really like about it, um, and I really appreciate Tracy's thinking about it, thinking and sort of creating this map. I don't think it's my favorite, but I I don't want it to just get. Um, I don't know. I just want to say that, that I, I appreciate um, a lot in this map, <laughs> so. Well, I mean, and to, to that point, I mean, I was trying to create it. I mean, that was the one I created over a weekend, like after hearing, looking at Arani's maps and trying to combine the map one details and some of Peggy's map details and, um, and some of what Arani did, particularly with South Amherst. I mean, I felt like it didn't, I was sort of a little bit concerned about how the numbers would work out by putting um, Amherst Woods and Echo Hill on the same precinct. And as you see, like that does like make those numbers like 3000 voters. So that wasn't what I was hoping for, but um, I was happy to play with them up. I do know just, and I did send them um, an email late, you know, for inclusion in our packet, but in talking to one of my um, district reps, um, George Ryan in district three in precinct four, who would be, he really likes this map, like this is his preferred map. And um, he doesn't like the other, the map one. He doesn't like map one and he doesn't like them. He doesn't like them because he personally would be, um, and I would be too, which is why I, I like some aspects of map three, but is that he's concerned that his, as a member of um, precinct four, that he's like paired with precinct seven in the new um, pairings and that it goes so far to the south. And um, I mean, we are sort of spoiled in precinct four and these downtown precincts that they're so tiny and you can walk everywhere and you know everybody and, and hey, we only have 300 voters, right? You, like, you know them all. And, but it's really not fair, I think, to the rest of the town. Um, but he just particularly, I think, we, I, you know, I don't know if it's just his self-interest, but he just, he has a lot of complaints about map one version four and, um, so he's he's told me that when it comes before the council, he plans to say that he endorses this other map. So I wouldn't want to make it like deleted off the planet, knowing that he feels that way. Not that he has like an out. I mean, not that councils were geary with him or anything, but you know, just to the point that some people might want to see a different version, or like we sort of keep it around in the background, and we have a we don't show it a lot, but we have a table that sort of describes the differences or whatever. Um, I do, I do agree with Sue's point that it's not great that um, that one precinct would, is all dorms and it has no voters. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it has a couple of problems. One is that one, the one precinct with no voters, and the other one is that two districts have sixty percent no of, of the act, uh, active registered voters. Um, yeah. So that is better than currently because currently. Oh yes. Um, so but the, <laughs> I know, but I think I think it's hard to make worse than currently. Uh, <laughs> with, I think to, <laughs> I think I, I think I look it was seventy five percent almost the current voters in two districts, right? Uh, so. it's, it's hard to beat the, that one. Um, so. Uh, so we still have the three. Um, one proposal I have is that we, I don't know, Mike, I don't know how hard it is to overlay. Do you have this boundary so that we can overlay it with um, minority population to see if any of the maps works better? Well, and I, and I had actually another request from Mike, if it's not a super total pain. I do, I do think, uh, Rene, to your point, we will want to have uh, at least one table in our presentation that talks about like the racial distribution in the districts, because that will come up. And that is data that we did have access to. Yeah. But because now that Mike, I mean, this is, you know, an ask, I'm just going to throw it out there. And but I, I would, you know, in terms of an argument for people such, you know, such as people in precinct four who aren't happy with the change that um, that that the map one represents. Um, so now that the voters are mapped, um, 
like you know as a gis layer i was curious about so one of the things that i've been looking at right and i've done those calculations and i can add them to our presentation about like under each of these maps what percentage of um residents are continue to be in the same precinct and what percentage of residents change precincts and then what percentage of residents are in the same district and what change districts even though of course the underlying you know there are some underlying changes with the boundaries of each but just you know in terms of like if people have a certain identity about it like how many are changing their precincts and so and the districts and if you look at um, map one version four um i believe 80 percent you know that is one of the goals right about trying to keep people in the same not change it too much so if we do map three i mean it is so radically different um because you know i was grabbing the ideas from uh Irene's super innovative map and um but it changes the it changes the precincts for over like half of the voters i mean it's a significant percentage of population and if we look at map one version four it changes the precinct for um uh, 40 uh, 20 percent of voters so 80 percent of voters are in the same precinct and then 89 percent of voters are in the same district so if we're not trying to you know upend the whole world you know with that other map like i mean that is a argument we could make too for it um but so my question actually sorry to get back to my question was just about if we do have the i mean similarly because if we've mapped if the voters are mapped as a layer then we could do the same sort of numbers about um you know how many voters change precincts or districts like under the different scenarios mike do you know what i mean yes i know what and you so mean. and just to kind of show that so because i know like george ryan is sort of upset that with the uh, map you know map one that some of the um for example this uh pre, pre I'll, I'll just speak to it quickly but um district five that it's like includes precinct eight and includes precinct five so it goes all the way from triangle street like all the way down to bay road but then if you actually look at the data on the table that accompany it so district five has 20 not almost three thousand voters and 2400 of those voters are in precinct eight so that means that even though george is concerned uh, council member ryan is concerned that it goes up to triangle street that segment that goes so far north only represents about like a few hundred voters so i just don't think that that's like a big concern so so tracy i think we cannot satisfy everybody because no, somebody, of from, somebody from north summers prison yeah. one is changing prison two is changing in no, that map, map three version two prison one is changing drastically prison two is changing drastically prison no, three of course. is changing drastically oh, everything is changing drastically it's not that we can keep one no. to satisfy one person um, right i but i just meant if it wasn't i just meant if there wasn't because i mean that Manic was something has, that well, okay. Go ahead. I think it would be useful to have that information in context, because I think yeah. the closer the numbers come to existing precincts and districts, I think the counselors that would, you know, that could sway the counselors and it may sway other people just to feel like they still have some sense of identity and clearly around the edges, it's going to change. I don't think that students are going to have a huge investment, but we do have a student in the committee. And who can probably speak to that. But as somebody said earlier, students are moving all the time. They're a very transient population. So um, that's what my thoughts are. So, okay, D. So, yeah, I'd like to hear from uh, Joseph because as you all are looking to plan this, it's not, just for this year or next year's election. What happens when we do have uh, a national you know, uh, election? Is there going to be a polling place set aside for students who will, at that point, you know, it shows that they participate. 
So don't you have to have a plan in place for the next 10 years? So I'm, I just want you all to consider that. It's not just about the, the local elections that take place, but it's a plan in place for you know, uh, the, the next 10 years of elections. Sue, were you saying something? We couldn't hear you. So I just, you know, which map considers that? I saw the map where there's zero in terms of, you know, that's included there where the students in the dorms. But wouldn't it be necessary in planning to have at least one polling place set up for uh, UMass and student voters? Again, not for this election, but for the next, uh, uh, you know, national election. Is that a consideration? So, yes, Sue, thank you for clarifying. <laughs> well, no, um, I'm just thinking on the last 10 years. And I mean, we have our polling places. If we're staying with 10 precincts, then we're going to stay with the 10 current polling places. Um, but... There is early voting now, and that's actually very close to being finalized where it's going to apply to every election going forward. So um, the way elections are happening from this point in time onward is different, very different than the last 10 years where everybody goes out to the polls. Now the, um, the distribution of how people are voting has changed. Um, there is definitely a much higher mail-in um, participation during elections. I think, you know, right now the students vote spread out. There's some in precinct one, there's some in precinct three, there's some in precinct four, some in precinct 10. So they're, they're very much, you know, and they vote in those polling places. They don't have their own polling place. They never, they really never, the only time they had a polling place was when we had sub precincts, which we did three times in the past. And and three times it was asked to be stopped um, because it just, they weren't getting the people out that they thought they would and the cost was too high. The, so you had said yeah. that they have, that UMass students currently vote in five precincts, right? That's my understanding. Four, four or five, I forget it's, how many. It's five. It's, it's five, five, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, they're spread out though, they're spread. So Peggy and then. Yeah, just to speak to Dee's concern, I, I think that's an interesting question. Sue, if we move to um, mail-in voting and early voting, is it reasonable to expect we could have a drop box on the UMass campus or something like that? So that would make it, um, instead of just the one at town hall, we could also have one on the campus and that would really make it easier for the students to vote. The drop box requirements, they have to be under surveillance. So they have to be under camera. There's a certain bunch okay. of requirements that would have to be okay. met before. Yeah, I mean, it can be definitely looked at. We could look at, okay. And yeah, I mean, yeah. UMass might be willing to do that, but yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, in, in time, um, just to think of time, so we still have three maps. Um, uh, so I have questions for Peggy. I'm looking at mentions one, five and one, four. Mm -hmm. And um, Tracy had, raised the issue that this uh, precinct two was had shrunk considerable versions in five. But I'm looking at the numbers and trying to figure out why, because I think you could have the same balance of numbers between two and six and shift a couple of blocks between two and six. So, so can I speak to the maps? Yes. So what I changed from version four to five, or I'm, I'm losing yes. track of the numbers yes, here, but yes. me thank too. you, thank <laughs> you, <Mark>. um, <laughs> was that I moved a dorm from um, precinct nine to precinct two. Yes. And yes. I did that in order to um, lessen the number of voters in district two, um, and then therefore increase the, um, increase the number of voters elsewhere. So, it, and increase the number of voters in four and decrease the number of voters in two. So it was just a balancing of registered voters. So you'll see that, you know, the, uh -huh. the numbers of registered yeah. voters in five is a little bit better. 
than it yes. was in four. Yeah. No, that's what I, it was. That was why. No, no, I know. But, I understand why, but the the um, the pressing two is much smaller um, in map five than in map four, even though it's at the top that probably they could be shifted more closer to map four, the top. Not part. so easy. It's actually not so easy. I tried. <laughs> Well, I don't remember having those numbers and questions. And that, um, right, so by adding that dorm, that's why there's that little kind of tail that goes down a little bit, like mm -hmm. into precinct, I mean, district four that wasn't there before. Yeah. Because that's that one additional dorm that had 394 people. And that's why in order to make that balance, then uh, Peggy had to move like 10 uh, census box out of precinct six into precinct. I mean, into precinct six from precinct two to make the numbers balance. But it is interesting but, that on on map one version four, so um, there's 3,400 population, right? 34. I mean, I'm sorry, 3844 in map one version four, and now um, the map one version five that it's down in the 30 like 3773. So it's like so that's, that's smaller. That's and what I'm by, saying. Yeah, and it's so by far it's like the smallest because every other precinct, well. And precinct anyway. six and precinct six is, is 3974. So precinct six could give some to precinct two to balance between those two a little bit since they share at oh, the mate. top. I mean, I had one super, mo well, I, yeah. It's hard to balance. So I had originally, Irina, I had originally wanted to change. I mean, in this map, in map, you know, in version five and version four, like two and six are in the same district. So I'm but I, but I had originally wanted to balance like Flathills Road and those neighborhoods up there, like the High Point neighborhoods, because they're yeah. currently in two. And you know, I feel like there are some neighborhoods up there, and they feel like neighborhoods, and make them all two. Um, and I couldn't get those numbers to work because those neighborhoods up there are pretty dense. But at the same time, you know, speaking to what people have talked about before is that we also have the districts. And yeah. so I, I mean, so they're still in the same district, so it doesn't matter that much, but I feel more comfortable not making precinct two so small personally. So my vote would be for um, the map one version four. Tracy, what scenario, did we eliminate one of the scenarios? You've got two scenarios. Yes. yes, we're down to scenario one. Scenario two was the first right. map that was the one off. that had the the old precinct pairs. Got it. Okay, I missed that. We still have three maps that we're talking about, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I mean, it doesn't seem like anybody favors that map three, right? So, should we just eliminate I... that? I mean, we can we can share some data on it if you know counselors ask. But I mean. Do any of us, would any of us want to vote for map three? My concern is the large imbalance. Otherwise, I, there are many things I like, but my concern is um, the large imbalance and how the large imbalance between the the districts. We have two that are taking 60%. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. But I mean, so map one version four still has like two that take 55%. Yeah, I mean, so the, I mean, that, I mean, that was George Ryan's argument that one is 60% and one's 55%. So what's the big deal? Like they're almost the same, but, yeah, but no. no, I know. I, of course, I mean, we don't have to, I'm just saying the, what, what I'm just explaining that. How some people might think about it, but if it's nobody, I'm. I mean, I worked on that map just as an alternative vision, and I mean, I'm not. I would not vote for that map myself. So, I think we can throw that out, and we can just we can mention, you know, Irene, as you said, you know, in the presentation, the report that you know we looked at other options and there were items we looked we liked in each of them, but like overall, we felt whatever one we were recommending, you know, has the most positive benefits and the least negative. And that's why we're going forward with that one. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, but I feel comfortable getting rid of map three, except for if we want to show a little data when we present it. How, I, I think it's going to get busy. If the more maps we have, the busier yeah. it's going to get. I, I would say if nobody has a huge investment in it, we should get rid of it. Because we have to get, we have to start calling it. Yeah. So, so can we do quickly? Um, since we have the the demographic, some demographic data, it's Mike. How hard would it be to overlay it with map three and map one version four? to make sure that we are not splitting communities. I think it's going to make you guys sick, like flipping back and forth between things, um, but it can be done if that's what we want to spend our time doing. I don't know uh -huh. how people feel that whether we should look at it. I, I, I would like to look at it, but I don't know how people think if we need. Joseph? Um, although I, I do agree with a lot of what's been said about Map3, I think in the interest of time, we probably need to nix one of these um and i think we can if we want to look at that data we can look at it with just like a smaller set of maps um just in the interest of like at the time we have well and i guess too like if mike felt comfortable like that request about the voter you know just the voter data just like we have the i mean just the number of voters that would change precincts and districts like if that wasn't a big deal to run it even on the map we reject just so we have that information in our back pocket you know if that issue comes up like i would appreciate that even though but i'm happy like discarding it is something that we wouldn't want to be our recommendation my plan is to run that those stats on all 30 maps that we produced no do with my next week. <laughs> please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> who's going to write in that? <laughs> so who's going to write in that one? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but that, yeah, once once I get my methodology down for doing it, it's going to be pretty quick to do it for each one of them. So, <clears throat> like whether we have two maps or three maps, and even correct. though we have one that we're preferring, we could just like right. have that information there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, thank you. I, I, I do. So I'm chiming in as a non-voting member here. I, I do agree with Joe's comment that we should present one map. This is our yes. this yeah. is our map to the council. Um, that does not mean that we shouldn't have other things ready to go to justify our decisions mm -hmm. and sure. data to back up those things. So I can produce those statistics and all of those other metrics and have the maps ready to go just in case they get... Um, you know, we get asked to produce them, so. Sure. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, this Irina, has her hand. Yes. Yeah, so I, I agree as well. Present one map, and um, I'm sure they'll have some comments and tweaks or whatever, but a slide, as Tracy indicated, should have, like, the demographic data of Correct. particular neighborhoods and communities. Um, where things intersect or where things are split up so that when because you have to predict what they're going to ask so certainly they're going to ask about race certainly they're going to ask about um you know apartments certain communities where students live that type of thing so i think having that demographic data on a slide or two um if it's too difficult to overlay and have several different versions of overlays um to me would help not only prepare you but give that information to the council which hopefully they'll ask those questions those are the questions that need to be addressed as as you configure the precinct and the districts okay uh, peggy and then tracy Okay, two things. Um, I think uh, a slide showing the demographic data that we have um, is, is overlaid on the, you know, with the precinct boundaries and district boundaries would be really helpful. Um, and I recommend it. And I'm going to say that the reason that I ended up with the map, drafting this map the way I did was because I was intentionally trying to make sure that we were not um, distributing communities of color to every different district if there was a way to to group them in order to 
you know, increase voting power, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say. Certainly not to cut communities with a line, but also in addition to try to cluster communities. Um, so I think that if you look at the map with the demographic data, um, at least the first couple layers that we have, that you'll see that. Um, so I wanna say that, but the other thing I wanna say is that around precinct two, um, there is a way, I mean, there's a way to add another 81 voters um, fairly easily without breaking into a um, neighborhood any more than I have already. Um, it does leave one long tail going right into the middle of, of I mean, it's, it's not pretty, but it's doable. So that's certainly something that we could do. That's oh. all. Uh, Tracy? So I was just going to suggest um, with the demographic data, I mean, Mike has provided a lot of it to us on maps already. Um, and maybe it's just because I'm like a data math person, but, and I know we have a couple map requests for him that are still out there, um, but I would be happy to whatever, you know, what, whatever maps we vote for, or if we want to show the demographics of each of these, like, I'm really happy to do that all, like, in, with the tables that we already have. It's, like, pretty easy to um, summarize that data in Excel or whatever. So I don't think we need to add more layers to the map, personally. And I, I know that Mike's already works, like, so hard on all the different versions, so. The Marilyn, and then I have a comment. So I don't know if you all have thought about this or it's just not enough time. Um, is there a way for you all to have um, some type of public presentation, like to set it up with the community? And I guess we'd have to, to find out is that, you know, you're able to do that as a committee um, just to get you know, a uh, public feedback on what you have already and to explain the the maps or the map um, to the public? Or is the town council meeting going to be your only opportunity to present this information to the public? I think because of the timeline, if we had one more month, I think we could have a public and a separate meeting besides the, the one that we had at, um, that we're gonna have at the town council. But I don't see in the current timeline how we can fit it in. Um, um, I think it's good that the meetings are now being broadcasted We've been requested public comment, um, trying to get as much traction as possible. Um, but I don't see how we can fit it in within um, the timeline that we have. Um, I can just foresee that being problematic because last time this process took place, people were able to meet in person explain, see things, you know, visually. And with this going on remotely, I, I do think it, it presents a barrier to uh, some residents in terms of their participation and ability to comprehend the information and the maps. Um, so that's that's my observation and what I'm getting uh, from, from particular community members. And so, once it's presented on the town council and that being the only only opportunity uh, for, for some people to actually see it, possibly weigh in. Um, I, I just kind of <laughs> foresee some, some challenges to that. Can I jump in real quick? Just yeah. to let everybody know that the maps did go up on um, the library walls, the Jones Library last Friday, so they're there with a big note um, saying to please contact the town clerk with any you know, questions, responses, every, all of that. So I haven't heard anything yet though. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. I know that the time has also been extended, hasn't it? The time hasn't for? 
for submitting this to the state. Hasn't the time been extended? No. no. Okay. No. I might have heard wrong. I thought there was an extension. No, which I think you're, what All you're right. referring to, D, is the uh, the governor's legislation, which is um, – it's really confusing, but um, we received an email from the state on Monday saying that it, this does not change, the governor's legislation does not change our process or de deadlines at all. Okay. Alrighty, thank you for the clarification. I'm Marlene and then Tracy. I think we, I think, you know, in order to move this along, I think we really need to sort of quantify what demographics, specifically what demographics we want to see. I've heard population of color, registered voters, apartment, residential, residence hall, so the kinds of dwellings that people look at. And we've also discussed looking at changes in the district and precinct populations. I don't know if there's anything else, but let's try to nail these down so we know what we're doing. Tracy? I mean, I think um, that's was one I was going to speak to, but um, Marilyn, we have most of that data already, as I was saying, like I've been keeping track of it. The thing we don't have is owners versus renters. And I mean, some of that data comes out of the census, the decennial census, but it's not, it hasn't been released yet. And so I wouldn't really want to mix and match data sets very much. And I think we have to, I suggest we just use the other data. The other okay. thing we can do is we can also have some numbers, like one, one thing I wanted to calculate that I haven't calculated yet is for example, like what is the total number of people who live in dorms, for example, you know, as a percentage of our population. And, and I, I know from the 2011 report that was reported like in terms of, you know, you have like 30% of the population living on 5% of land or whatever. And so I'd like to put that in the report. Um, but, but I, but I actually oh, did. It's, it's, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. But, what, I'm, what I'm suggesting is what are we putting in the report? I know, I know that the data are available, but specifically what information are we going to present in the report? And how are we going to get it? And I know you've got some of it, but how do we make that available to everybody? Yeah, I mean, I can I can add my tables and things. And as I said, with the race data, ones were set on, you know, the map we're preferring and, you know, the final kind of version of the other maps, it's it's easy to like run some of those numbers. So, um, and I think those can be add-ins. Like, I'd be happy to work on that section of the report and fill that in. And I left on the slides, I left um, spaces for those. Okay. Um, but I, I did want to speak um, just briefly. I mean, the reason I originally raised my hand was to Dee's comment about um, just having a public forum and public outreach and providing public comment. Um, I mean, I realize that with remote participation, you know, our methods aren't perfect, right? But we are trying to do um, public outreach that so we have had the two um, press releases and our meetings are now being broadcast and all the meetings are recorded. I mean, I understand not everybody has equal access. And I mean, the thing is, and I know that I've, you know, reached out to a lot of people about the maps um, and tried to get common and I've tried to engage people. I mean, it's so like wonkish and so data heavy that I kind of lose people right away. I was like, ooh, and you know, you live in South Amherst, how do you feel about this option or that option or whatever? And not everybody engages in it. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, I like, you know, I have been to, I've, I've talked about the NAPs at um, neighborhood meetings. Um, and I've, and as I, you know, I presented yesterday at the League of Women Voters Steering Committee meeting, um, where I created the slides for. And I mean, personally, I'm happy to go out individually. I think it's hard for like our whole committee to present. I mean, I'm not sure how much interest there is in the community in it, because I mean, I really have want, I've hoped that we would get more feedback from people, but I just like people are so busy and so on. And so, I mean, I feel like some of those kind of informal outreach, like if um, maybe better to get input, like D, if, I mean, if you did know specific communities that are really interested in this, you know, maybe, you know, I, I mean, I'd be happy to just like present it just, you know, as a factual type thing that, 
or and I don't know if any other members would feel like they have the time to do that too but okay. um, I'd like to see what you all have posted at um, the the library because I think going to um, community um, rooms for instance in some of these apartment complexes where they have these um, open uh, community areas uh, and sometimes they even have like um, boards where you can post things um, might be useful in terms of outreach because there's an assumption that the Jones Library is the you know neutral kind of public space um, but even prior to COVID you know folks who don't have transportation for instance um, that's not necessarily the place where they're going to go for news and information, although many people think that's the logical place, right? Um, <clears throat> so I'm just trying to think of other ways to uh, create outreach in the community, to get the information out there, to get folks involved, um, and you know, to get a different, those, those demographic groups that, that we're talking about not splitting up um, and getting information out to them. So um, I'll, I'll go and see what you all have at the Jones Library and maybe ask for help at Town Hall to replicate some of that in some form uh, within these community rooms. Okay. I mean, I, I believe guess. what's posted at the library and the town hall are the maps themselves. It doesn't have yeah. like the whole, yeah. um, you know, reasoning and like the narrative. Right. So. And that's what I'm saying. So there would have to be without a person, uh, there would have to be some explanation, let's say, um, to follow it. But I, I can see what you all have and maybe figure out some short narrative or explanation but i just yeah i find it you know problematic but i think it's stuff that we're all dealing with in terms of doing everything remotely and and i'm happy to like help you d if you want to try to put something together you know to explain i mean absolutely the, the slide the slides were just like a primer right so, great yeah so. right all right thanks okay 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 on the Interest of time, it's 7.22. I know Merlin needs to leave at eight. We need to narrow that down maps. I know that we are not. Um, so what would help everybody uh, make a decision? Um, ask... Mike, can you put them up on the screen so we can look at them side by side? Would that be helpful to everybody? Kind of, yeah. Side by side by side, three of them. Right. I mean, I guess, we'll you know, we, we like. spoke earlier about map three, like, can, I mean, I can make a motion to eliminate map three. Does anybody want to keep map three as our preferred map? I just, Who I second can... that? Map three version two. Yeah, we're just like. I think we determined that it's better to just keep that for data purposes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can, I, so I, as I much mean, as I, I, each time I look at it, I like yeah. it more. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> none like, of the, none of the maps are perfect, right? I just um, uh, the more I, I look I, at it, it's like oh, it has nice things. But my concern is that it's going to raise red flags by having a prison with zero registered and, voters and it's also and a big imbalance. And it's also changing the precincts and the districts for like so many people. You know, like time, half uh, of the population. The, go the government right. has changed since last time. So <laughs> uh, uh, right, you can be. For me, that's oh. not an issue, but for other people, it might be. Um, but, but I'm okay. comfortable. For me, so it would I, be the imbalance. I, I made that motion, and Marilyn seconded it. If we okay. Wanna. Oh, sorry. Um, so, um, Tracy. So I make a motion that we eliminate Map Three, Version Two, is. And Marilyn from... seconded it, so I was asking you both. So you both. Oh, we can vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tracy? Um, yes. Aye. Peggy? Shannon? Aye. Joseph Gordon? Aye. Marilyn Blastin? Oh, she, we just lost her. Uh oh, she's not there. Oh, she's back. 
Oh, good. She's <laughs> just, just muted. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Marilyn, you vote. The, so, the motion is um, that we're voting is to eliminate MAP 3 version 2. You're on mute, Marilyn. I read that as I. <laughs> I did too. Hi. <laughs> 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 and right uh, okay um can i abstain can it be you, can, you, know? you, can, you can abstain i guess really? i'm gonna but... abstain okay because i have but the motion passes to eliminate all right them. so we are left with two so can i speak to this um, hearing people's concerns about the smallness of um, precinct two in version five, we can certainly boost that up a little bit. I was trying, there's a neighborhood that I was trying not to break up any more than I already had, but I think that um, the concerns are well put. So maybe the thing to do is to boost uh, precinct two a little bit in map one version five, um, which has a little bit better distribution of voter numbers and suggest that is our final map. So I, I can second, and I was looking at the numbers. Tracy? Um, well, did you just second it? So we're in the middle oh, of the Oh, okay, we can, or... I can take it up. Uh, <laughs> can I take it back? Uh, <laughs> no, so one of the things too, you know, when I, one of the things I didn't like that much with um, that map, I mean, I did have concerns about um, precinct two shrinking, but um, with precinct five, there's a um, there's a census block that got moved from precinct nine to precinct five between High and Whitney Street. Yeah. Um, and that is a neighborhood that I used to live in, and so um, so it's a little bit up from where you are, Mike. It's sort of on the boundary of the peach and the yeah the olive in this yeah. area and so i had been trying to keep i mean one thing i didn't like about you know when i was working on map one is you know, like splitting that up at all because it, that also feels i mean that also feels like a neighborhood to me is like everything on one side of triangle but there is there are sections of it that you know have less of a neighborhood feel that have more population than aren't there long term and so on and so I'm just trying to keep that as together as possible. Um, so there's like, um, yeah, Peggy just moved uh, like one single block. It's right, and it's, it's like right six, here. It's right. 60 people, but but I don't, again, it's like, it's so hard with any of these numbers mm -hmm. to like ever change anything. Um, I mean, my my preference is still for the map one version four, but, and, and I would, I have a few minor suggestions to like balance, um, that out along between Strong and Northeast Street to like add those two polygons in that aren't green and make them green. They're very small in terms of population. Right um, here. Yeah, that one and the one above it, above the little, yeah. And together those add up to um, 43 people, which is like almost nothing. And I think it would make it like a little cleaner, but um, that's super minor. Um. I had a suggestion in map five on the northeast corner. You know, the, the way to increase it would be on the northeast corner of precinct two to the northeast of precinct two. There are two census blocks that add up to 180. So the ones that go along is Pleasance towards um, Pine Street. Okay. So in here somewhere? Yes, that one and the one in between inside. Those, okay. That block adds 180. So that takes it to 39. But then it's taken out of six, doesn't that shrink? I mean. Yeah, but it shrinks oh, six. I see. OK. And you're still OK. But it balances and it increases. Uh, mm. It takes you to 39.58. Prison two to thirteen and fifty-eight, and then the other one gets reduced to thirty-seven, ninety something. 
So just so I'm clear, you're talking about the two blocks right at the very top of precinct yes. two. It's 185 altogether. I thought it was 180. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to pull that up too. And it's a, it's a Ideally, little weird. Some of the polygons are get kind of weird, but we can see. It would have been great to have the two little other blocks next to. Yeah, is this considered a neighborhood? I don't know it very well off of East Pleasant, like this this neighborhood right here. Yeah, I want to, yes. if we can pull up the actually interactive map that shows like where the houses actually are. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Okay, can I give you a comment? I was just going to say, I did look at those two little blocks there because I wanted to, I thought, oh yeah, let's put them together. This is one of those cases which happens over and over, which is that the block delineation goes down the middle of the street. Yeah. So whenever you pick a block, know, you lose the people on the far side of the street. And I just, I didn't feel I could abandon them, basically. Um. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a huge issue, right? Like with yeah. any kind huge. of neighborhood that then huge. you, yeah. I, I would right. agree with that. I wouldn't want to split that up then. So what's really interesting here is the blocks that we're, that Irina is talking about is this big block right here that has 150 people in it that snakes all yes. the way around this neighborhood goes up to Cushman Market right here. Mm -hmm. And then I believe you were talking about this kind of donut hole right here in the middle of the neighborhood, right? Yes. Arena minus 35. Mm -hmm. So Arena was, Arena was suggesting to add this block with 150 and this block with 35 into precinct two. But that's just such an issue though, you know, to Piggy's point about with this using the center lines because then everybody on the outside of the streets is like, I, I yeah no. I mean, well, then the, the other thing right. is that it it further amplifies like the separation of this neighborhood, of Grantwood, um, Grantwood Colonial Court, Blackbeard, because on version five, this block of forty and this block in thirty five are in precinct six. So if if we made if we turned uh, all of this right. green, it would further break that and that out. I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm just pointing it out um yeah i i don't like it when it, with the center line is like basically splitting the neighborhood so i would vote to not make that change but uh, right now the way we have it is like that i mean that's why i would stick with the priest the version four personally but it's such a it's so tough to do a trade-off here because I, I hear you and I, I really didn't, I wasn't happy about breaking up that neighborhood in the middle of town either. Um, I think, yeah, it's really hard. And, and yet I'm, I'm also not so happy about having um, precinct four, uh, district four have only a thousand something voters. True. But, I mean, it, I see it as better than the current District 3 that only has 730 voters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we made progress. <laughs> Marilyn? Um, I, I lost you for a little bit, but I, my one question I have is, are we talking about moving districts or just, <coughs> excuse me, precincts? Because <coughs> if it's precincts, I mean, we're currently in a, for the most part, in a district mode. So if we're flipping numbers between, within a district, I don't see that as a huge problem as compared with um, someone moving someone to a different district. <laughs> and that's completely true. Yeah. And I mean, that's why I sort of gave up trying to reconnect that neighborhood in the Northeast, like Flat Hills and um, the High Point neighborhood, because again, to your point, Marilyn, like it's all in the same, it's all in district two. So maybe it doesn't make that big a difference. I just, with that in mind, I guess I had just, yeah. I mean, if we wanna vote on which people prefer, but I mean, they're, they're pretty close. I mean, they do change it a little bit, you know, to Peggy's point about the numbers it adds up a little, but um, it's not a huge difference. So, and, and also an answer to your question, Marilyn, the only change in district here is that block in the middle of town, moving from district four to district five. So that's 60 people that 60 are- 60 people, right. Yeah, and it, you know, it's, it's in a neighborhood no, and that's hard. I, actually, you did just change some, two. hold on, you choose, two, right? you choose those ones on, on the um, edge of 
district four, um, Peggy. So you changed um, um, whatever Salem Place. So Salem mm. Place was in on on the four map. Salem Place is in six, and here it's like re it's reconnected with the center town. So those move. That's about a um, hundred and eighteen. Mm. No, and Salem. No, that's five hundred. So we've we've moved five hundred and sixty people. About right. That's true. Mike, can we overlay the demographic data on these two? Maybe that can help us move in one or the other direction. Uh, yes. Let me get that started. It's going to take me a little bit. So, I mean, one, you know, one comment with either of these maps, you know, because they are close except for the 500 people <laughs> um, is, um, is it, I mean, you know, it's possible that like some of our comments that we could get could be like that they hate like larger elements <laughs> of, of these things, so. I mean, if people feel strongly on one map or the other, I think we can, um, you know, just go forward with one. Do we want to to have to Apollo show hands which of these two each one preferred at this moment? If they were like this, or we want to see changes tweaking to any of these maps. Merlin, do you have any prefer of these two? I don't think I do. I'm just trying to remember which of the, is it map one version four scenario one or two where the district boundaries change. We have a couple of a combination, two, two districts that are different. This one are the ones that the boundaries, the district boundaries have changed uh, because they have a better distribution of uh, registered voters with respect to the current. But I guess what I'm saying is with the precincts within each district, are they the same or different? I think one of those is scenario one is the, there are two districts where the precincts are different. Is that the one? Scenario one has diff some different pairs. Um, and so, then scenario you know, two has the same pairs, but we had talked earlier about um, we dropped this qualifying scenario two because it created more imbalances with the voters. I, I guess, you know, for, I mean, I'm just wondering how folks are going to, I think one of the things we said is we would put them two out, but my guess is that if we were to look at the changes by district in version four, map one version four, we're gonna see bigger discrepancies. And I don't know if people are gonna object to that. So it's a balance. So what's important? Do you maintain your district boundaries as best you can, or do you in favor greater, more demographic? Um, well, it's not necessarily- I, I mean, I did, I did. I did have this numbers originally. You can look. Thanks. Peggy, but I was going to say, comment. in the interest of time, I could live yeah. with either map. I might have a preference. I might have a uh, preference for tweaked map five, but I can live with either map. And okay. it's now twenty. Do we have yeah, twenty-two minutes? It's, it's, yeah. So that's why I. That's why I was thinking. Okay. Um, I want to do a show of hands. So, Peggy. So it has a preference for map five. Do we have a, a Joseph? Um, my preference is version four, map one. Um, Tracy? Um, my preference is the version four. Marilyn? I think it's version five. Um, Arena, you can't abstain. <laughs> no, for me, it's version five, but tweaked so that there is a better balance in prison two and prison six. I could do that. 
um, do we before? So this would be um, this would be the map that we would be moving forward before we decide. Make sure is there some things that we want to make sure? Do we want to go over and make sure, Tracy? Um, so I just had a question. Do we? So you know, one of the changes with that map um, was to um, so that like where the dorm goes like down you know more right it's more of a tail i mean the state wouldn't care about that mike would they no because they I would don't. understand no. that it's because they understand that the dorms are so quirky right they uh tracy they didn't even have that big of an issue with the tail that went right. down northampton road on version okay. three that Got we were it. so okay. concerned about sure. last week so right. i really don't think that they would have an issue with that um marilyn Your hand is raised. OK, uh, Peggy. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Joseph why he preferred map four. Um, I think it really has to do with a lot of what Tracy said. Um, like, I honestly it, like both maps. I think the um, Preference is tiny. Um, I think like I could, I'm extremely happy if we picked version five, I'd be happy if we picked version four. I think it's just more, I prefer the um, the drawing on precinct two in the version four. Well, and I think, so if we could just, I mean, if, if we are discussing it at all, um, just in terms of, you know, the question that came up about which um, of the, which of the census blocks change boundaries, right? Change districts because I mean, yeah. So I mean, part of it is the cosmetics of District Six and what it looks like. Um, but there is, I mean, right. So there were those changes around that around sale in place, um, and then there is that one neighborhood in the center of town, right? So that's a total of whatever three hundred eighty nine around five hundred voters. Um, so one thing for me with that is that. If, if we go back to precinct, not that anybody is going to change their mind, I'm just going to explain it, but if we go back to, um, if we go back to precinct, well, I don't know, Mike, if you could just blow up one of those maps and zoom in on this section of um, like um, whatever Main Street and at the edge of like Northeast Street and yeah, like over there. We don't need right to have here. both of them. Yeah, if we don't, so we don't need to have them both open at the same time. So, okay. I mean, one thing with this is like, right, this is sort of considered the center of East Amherst um, <laughs> and like right to the south, southeast of where Mike is looking, that's Fort River School. And so the other map, the pre, the version four, it's split it around Redgate Lane and um, North Whitney Street. And, and then, and there's also like a, I don't know, power line or something there and so what it's saying is that so i mean it had come up a couple of times about east the east village center is if we keep them if we keep them map on the right then those those the sale in place and stuff are connected to the east village center and if we don't we're like drawing a line at southeast northeast street but, hey, uh, Tracy, no. I think the one on the left, map five, does a better job. Um, but uh, if you, but I'm saying if you think that that's the center. Because the village center, so the corner of Pella Road and Northeast Street or East Street. Uh, where where Fort is, River is. is. Yeah. yeah, so then you have the school. Yeah. There's one business. So on one side, you have the old common. Right, so to the east, you have the on the southeast corner is the common. So it's a bit of center, but actually there is not that much of a center because on one side you have the common, on the other side you have the school um, and there's one business and the corner. On the other side is empty land on the north, north. Yeah, I mean, those are the same. The so, part so, where so. Mike is, the only change is the one between Redgate Lane and stuff yeah. and going. I think Redgate Lane. And going I th east. I think the Redgate Lane, I think I'll go between Strong and East Pleasant Street, 
um, to the west, to the east, mm -hmm. and we're having problems. There are a couple of houses there. Well, I mean, there's or, 500 people in this little section that we just changed, Irene. Yeah, yeah, that, that section. Yeah. Yeah. But the, there's not much link to, I think there's not much of a, I used to live there. There's not much link to okay. the, to the, on the other side of uh, okay. North, North right. Street. There is uh, two, two or three farms. Okay. Um, there's populations. So I don't think that, but uh, I think it, in fact, there's more connection to the West than to the East. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I was, that was there just are many condo, there, There's a more connection. Well, there's to, that condo. I mean, that's why Salem Place is 330 people. No, but there's a, also there are a couple of condos uh, along North East Street. Okay. Yes, and that's true. That, that yeah. So I so think it makes more feel more connected to downtown. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so then really then the only change that it's like significantly in the neighborhood would be those 60 people that got changed over in in like closer to the high school between high and whitney so it's just the 60. Yeah. okay yeah thank you for explaining that okay so mike you were showing the demographics right yes all right i was trying to spin something up quickly so this is um map one version five um right here you're not, you're, you're not showing it really you're showing the pdf so oh showing, okay okay you have to share the other screen Yep. New share. Mike, how many windows do you have open? <laughs> no. A lot. Um, let's see. Now, do you see it? Yes. Okay. So this is map one, version five, the district and precinct combinations. And then I have um, the demographics broken out by different um, different groups so do we want to just kind of turn them on one at a time and kind of zoom in and take a look at things or do we just want to take yeah. like a, a high level um it's really hard like this gets it gets really tricky on the eyes and it um so and are we looking at districts or are we looking at precincts of where things would be divided i think we look at the districts right and we start with, I think one at a time, I think we can go. So here's Hispanic and Latino. Um, and let me see if, so do we just want to look at districts because I can turn off the, pre, the precinct boundaries. No, leave them in the background. I think it would be good to leave them. Is everybody okay reading the background or? Yeah. It's, so it's I have a question. I have a question though. So when we're looking at the layer then, are we, you, they're not translucent or anything, right? It's not like coming, the under layer isn't coming through. They're solid on top of the layer. Well, what I have is I have the, uh, the precincts are here and they're, they're translucent so that you can see through them. To s it's really difficult to see all the yeah. different layers kind of okay. superimposed on one, on top of one another. Um, Got it. So what I have here is, this is just kind of, this is the district breakdown. Sure. Um, of, and this is Hispanic and Latino population that we're kind of seeing. So, you know, there's a pretty a good group of group here in three um, with Hampshire College being the only place that's broken out and put in five, along with um, Amherst, College Amherst College and a little bit in the center of town, uh, Colonial Village, and then um, like Rolling Green in Echo mm -hmm. Hill. And then it also has, this is Village Park and it looks like some of the dormitories and stuff here. No, and no. Um, um, Olympia, 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 Olympia Drive. Right. Olympia Drive. Right. And then there's a, a big cluster up here in North yeah. Northwest. Sure. Okay. Uh, four would be the only one that looks to be a little low. And I mean, we can zoom in here and see. A little see. bit splitting. Okay. And now so But I mean, this just... is real. This is really hard because this is the most dense right. area of town. So, so just with the colors. Um, mm -hmm. Not to complicate, but like, what are the difference? The what? What are the? So you're doing it based on absolute numbers, not on percentages, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Percentages. Right. It yeah. gets crazy. No, it, sure. It no. gets. And I kept them, and I know that I had to keep them at. I kept them at the same scale, mm -hmm. um, because otherwise it just gets so hard 
especially for people who aren't comfortable reading maps, it gets really, really, really hard to compare one thing to another. <laughs> so for all the different um, groupings, I kept the scale the same. Okay. Um, Got it. So, I mean, I guess, okay. you know, I was thinking I just, of, like, if we were doing a presentation that to have some kind of maps just displaying, like, just a quick snapshot, not with all the numbers, but just to show, like, here were the pockets and the, they're kept oh. within the districts and then, like, here's the next population. And, I mean, okay. that might be a nice way to show it. Okay. So, this is Asian. Can, yes, you this, this. can you zoom out a little bit? Yeah. Yes. And and Mike, so I know you and I had spoken about this when I called you about some other aspects mm -hmm. of the data, but you were saying that anybody that these are not mutually exclusive groups, right? So that the Asian would include anybody who identified as Asian only or as multiculturally Asian with Asian being one of the categories. Is that correct? It's it's both. Correct. No, that's so, what I'm saying. So yes. it would be anybody who included Asian at all. Correct. Like every set. Okay. Correct. Okay. So in in that way, like when we if we were to oh I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. I'm just wondering, is there a way you, we could get an unduplicated count of people of color that we would define? So I know that th there's more than one option. You can say, I think there are two questions. One are you Hispanic or Latino? Yes, no. And then you can specify, um, I don't know if the, on the census it was multiracial or you had to specify which races you identified with. You specified which races you identified with. Okay, so. But you could also choose other. There was always an other category. Okay, but discounting other. You know, what, what, what's the question? Do we wanna know the distribution of Hispanic so just, residents or residents of color and how are we defining residents of color? So I know in some instances, Asians are not considered, well, there's a whole question of underrepresented minority or Asians considered underrepresented minority. And I know Asians comprise many different, you know, that's a, a very large group in terms of geographic origin and things of that nature. But what's, what's the question? Because, you know, we're, we're not talking about, large, generally speaking, we're not talking about large numbers. And do we just want to, represent areas where there's a large minority population? I mean, I think what or, we're trying to show is that we're not breaking up um, populations of color, right? So, would so we say just that through like a snapshot of it and not looking so much at the numbers and we really didn't have so much flexibility, right? Just like given all the other constraints on the total population. So we're just trying to show that they, we aren't intentionally, um, you know, as somebody else had brought up, you know, like distributing populations of color in such a way as to disenfranchise people or something. So if I could just yeah. uh, make a suggestion in terms of, you know, that's a really good question, Marilyn. What are we talking about when we talk about uh, racial minorities and uh, ethnicities and different groups uh, within the town of Amherst? So you're talking about also language groups. So um and nationalities so for instance i'm sorry i'm <laughs> forgive me for doing so what what we're talking about for instance when you talk about asian american communities you're talking about like the cambodian community and in certain apartment complexes there are um larger numbers of cambodian community Cam cambodian residents for instance, that are in certain uh, apartment complexes. And we could probably just figure out which one has a, a larger propensity, you know, or larger populations. Same thing like Colonial Village is the example of, it's a black community, a black and Hispanic community, but they're also Cape Verdean. So, you know, it's not like just a an easy, type of uh, dispersion of who lives where. And that's why I was suggesting that it's economic or socioeconomic class um, considerations having to do with the apartment complexes. So 
I, I think like it uh, might have been Tracy that had said uh, we need to have those considerations. Like these are things you all considered in um, creating these maps. It's not something that you ignored. And in an authentic way, not just symbolically, like you did pay attention to in what is it, District 2, for instance. And 3. You know, that lower, yeah, District 2 and 3 in, in those lower right. areas, sure. you have those apartment complexes uh, staying together. And therefore, those socioeconomic groups that could be students, it could be, you know, um, again, renters, uh, 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 different ethnicities, different racial groups, but you try to keep them together. Assuming, and we're all assuming a lot here, that some, some of their interests might align more so together as opposed to, you know, other areas within uh, the community or other populations within the community. I don't know if that answers it, but that's that's how I look at it. So I mean, the so one of the things, Dee, and I think um, we had talked about this early on, right? Is that I mean, you know, anecdotally, and you know, from being on the ground about which Asian communities are in which complexes, or you know, how it breaks out by nationality, um, and you know, countries of origin. Um, okay. But we don't have that data for the 2020 census because it hasn't been released yet. Like it will be okay. released later. And so we wouldn't have any figures on this. I mean, I recommend, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna throw this out there, especially, you know, as we get towards eight o'clock is that I think it's nice to show these maps. I, I don't think we need to focus too much on them. There's not that much we could do with them. And we can talk a little bit about the limitations of what they are, like including the fact that they group all Asians together kind of thing. Um, and just, okay. you know, visually just show that we're, we were not doing anything to disenfranchise these populations. And I, I know and Peggy, and, Peggy, and Peggy's mentioned, right, that she was explicitly looking at that as one of her considerations, you okay. know, when she was making the tweaks to the map one. So, I mean, I, I'm just gonna, I mean, do people think that that would be just showing visually, you know, a couple of these different for the larger of the populations, including African Americans, Asians, and Hispanic, um, and just you know showing that those are what those look like. The other populations are just so much smaller. Marlene. Marilyn, we can't hear you. I'm looking at the clock, but I agree yeah. with Tracy. I think there's some hard data that we have and then speculative based on anecdotal evidence or whatever. And I think we just have to make sure that we differentiate between those. Yeah. However we do it. So, you know. I, I, I will, uh, Peggy we don't and need, go ahead, sorry. Peggy, and then I want to be cognizant because Marlene said that she had to leave at eight. Um, so- I've got about three uh, minutes, yeah. What? I, I, are we ready to come to a vote? So what are we voting on? On which map to move oh, okay. forward? <laughs> so well, that, that somebody has to make a motion, but I didn't want to make a motion until uh, it heard from Peggy and they heard everybody saying oh. that they're ready to make. I thought forward. everybody, the majority liked map one version five if we tweak it a little or something. We have a Mahek Lani joined the meeting, so we should get uh, her voice as well. And she... Go ahead. Okay, so can I speak? So I, yes, I also heard that the majority of people, at least before my joined, um, was going to go with version five, but we said tweaked, but we didn't actually decide on what the tweak would look like. I just think that we need to make that clear. Um, so I don't know if I can share my screen, but <laughs> I think you can. Can I? Okay. Um, so let me just uh, show you which what I think it should be. Um, so maybe Mike needs to stop sharing. Oh, yep. Yep. And then.
I usually do this on a different map, actually. So I'm a little bit of a mess here. So have you shared yet? Oh. No, I haven't. Okay. Actually, I'm going to share this one because it's just already done. Um, share. Okay, so this is um, this is not the precinct builder map; it's the other map, but it shows you what this would look like. Um, so I'm I'm taking of any suggestion of putting these two blocks at the top of precinct. Um, what was in six into back into two. This little one here could also go into two, but I'm kind of inclined to leave it with its friends here um, only because we're splitting a neighborhood right down the middle. Doesn't feel great. And I think that giving some, um, putting a little bit more population into this group allows these folks to, to feel more of still a, a cohesiveness than if we put this little block over there. Um, similarly with this block down here, we could move it over, no problem. But then um, I think these are railroad tracks, yes, that go up. Mm -hmm. Feels to me like there's more of a-, a Yeah, and, and these... I mean, and in this neighborhood, in defense of this, in this neighborhood, Grantwood Drive is like one of the major roads. Yeah. So you are keeping stuff on the same side of Grant, those three okay. little ox. Marilyn has her hand up. I, I have one comment and then I, I absolutely have to leave. I would say if they're still in the same district, I'm not sure that it makes a huge difference because I, I think agree. people are more apt to identify where I think that the goal is for people to identify with their district more so than their precincts. Okay. So Marlene, have, do you want, I do have to leave. So I'm do you sorry. want to leave your vote before you go? I thought I will, we had voted, but <laughs> I will I just vote. reiterate that I will version five is my vote. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, Mahek, you have a hand up. Yeah, I was just about to say that, I'm sorry, is my background too loud? No, no it's okay. okay. Okay, I was just about to say that I absolutely agree with Madeline's point about people uh, identifying more with the district rather than the precincts, which is why I would also vote for um, version five. Okay, so do we... Uh, have a motion to vote and uh, with the modified version five. So the one, the two maps that are on the table right now is version five tweaks with the change of purpose with Peggy and version four. So Marlene um, voted for I second five. that motion. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm rusty. Marlene uh, Blumstein voted for uh, map five, Mahek Gelani. Uh, I vote for five, I'll vote for five. Tracy? I'll vote for five. Peggy Shannon? Five. Joseph Gordon? Uh, I for five. Okay. And then have the five, so we have a map. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I guess I would suggest, um, because <laughs> I would suggest, you know, if we are gonna show other alternative data, um, I'm just thinking in terms of our data, whatever data we're pulling together with the report that like pre um, version four and version five are so similar that I guess I would just drop four. I agree. You know, in terms yeah. of showing any kind of data in a chart and maybe we want to show that, you know, change the world version like map three or, or even the one that we had eliminated where we have this map with like the different precinct pairs. <laughs> You know, just because some people are going to feel really attached to the current precinct pairs, and those could be the three. If we do show any data, not that we're going to show the other maps, but if we do show any data, that those would be the three that we would present. Can I show mine? That's a radical. That we could show. No, I mean, oh, I would. We should well, definitely we, show we yours. Could, we could put some of them That's in a, the discarded one. I I think we should put them in the presentation just to show that we were really like thinking. I mean, yours is so innovative. So I would put it in the presentation. For I you. agree. <laughs> I told no. I told. I think it's really important for people to see that we were really thinking about voter distribution, and right. but when you do that, this is what you get are these long precincts, yes. which right. And so. and we could show all of the maps in the presentation. We just won't put them in the report. I think. I mean, and say that we recommended the one, you know. 
We have only a certain amount example. of time. We have to be no, cognizant of, of the no, absolutely. council. Uh, uh, I, last night, I wouldn't spend a lot of time with didn't They went to after midnight, actually. That was a little at, scary. At 10, 30, at 10 30, I gave up about staying for the vote because so, I had to work this morning and I couldn't. So I actually heard them, so, Lynn, um, Irene, she, when they finally got to that item, she said, Oh, she was here earlier tonight and now she's gone. <laughs> And it was literally like 1130 or something. So. Okay, so um, next yeah. steps. Okay. We, we have this map, we should post it on town hall and so we and will I take read. we will take down the version five and we will just um, post. I mean, sorry, we will take down version four and we will post this new version of Five. Yes. I mean, so yeah, this is okay. the map moving forward, and right now, what we have to do is um, okay. write the report, try to get some feedback within this time. Uh, for tonight, we still need to separate um, how we're gonna write the report, what information we want to see on the presentation that can be tweaked next time uh -huh. i think we have time we have one more meeting before uh, we have to submit the report but i would like to spend the time um, making sure that the report is solid and we have covered all the bases yeah. um, okay for the report because that's our final product the presentation uh -huh. I agree we have some more time so we could do it in parallel but on the back burner and as we go adding information to the report it could be added some I mean I think they can go back and forth right if we they can go back like, and forth yeah, and some I mean, things like they have to yeah. match no but of I think the timeline for now is that uh I don't know if we want to have work uh, two working groups that they take a first pass at the report and then another working group takes once the first group decides that maybe by Friday that they have one version of the report, another group might take over and just for open meeting though, we cannot all work. Well, I get, so I have a question procedurally about whether we want the same pair or whoever's working together to like work on the whole report or only to work on, um, like parts of the report, like is a report splittable into like two sections or should it just be like one pass and then another pass? I'm what open to suggestions. I just. Here's a proposal for the report that um, every everybody can participate in it if they all send their comments to one person and we don't then send the comments back. So, I mean, we could do a working group but we could also just say everybody as you did this past week, contribute, and See? then one person will, you know. Okay, so I have a suggestion afterwards. D. The... So, um, is it going to go about with the? Um, is it going to go about with the Google Doc uh, process that we did for the press release? I don't think we can. Do I don't that. think we can do no, it. I, no, we no. can't do that with our report. It's got to be oh. offline. Okay. Uh, I I had a suggestion um, because to, sometimes to combine all the comments that might be, uh, if everybody has comments and one person is trying to manage all the comments, they might be contradictory. So I'm going back to the working group. Could two people work on combining? So they go to one, one person, but maybe two people get together and trying to see, make sure that there are no contradictory so there might be five six comments coming in five comments coming in but they don't match so there's going to be have to be in some editorial uh -huh. being made um so that's when i'm saying instead of one person taking that to split the work or share the work of if there's some contradictory between the comments that you get from multiple people um, so f for me, for the workload, and especially because I had offered, I do think that some of the data is helpful, like to show okay. some of the numbers. And so I want to check, I will check like the quantitative numbers 
and also run, a, you know, check the numbers with um, map one version five in terms of okay. the percentage and the race numbers, like some of the race stuff and so on. And, and I'll prepare that and then we can insert that into the report or into the presentation as needed. Great, so you're in charge. So I will do that piece to, until like Saturday ownership. or something. Took ownership of data gathering Oops. that could be inside the report or can be in an appendix. Right, okay. Or part, so part so of I'll it. look at that section of the appendix, but I won't work. I mean, I'm happy to do some narrative too, but I'll just, I need to, I'll just focus on the data now because I okay. feel like as Marilyn was saying, the, the narrative of the report is pretty good. This is after this is after the tweaks get made, correct? Like right. there are no, going to be yes. Like, yes. Okay. So and, and who is and who is making those tweaks? So Peggy only changed you just changed like two or three. Um, yeah, I'll send them blocks. to you, Mike. Perfect. Yes, I would like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I'd so. like it documented. Otherwise, I might go rogue. So <laughs> so do we um for for the report, going back to the report, uh I cannot work on it on Monday, <clears throat> so I'm um, clarifying this. I have. Some... I'll, I'll write it. I mean, I'll do whatever needs to be done. I just don't. So thank you. To me, it works best if everybody tells me what they want. In okay. It. Tracy does the stuff with the data. I will write something and I will send it out, send a draft out before next meeting. And if there are, um, I'll send a draft out as soon as I can. People send me comments. I will try to. I can do that, right, Sue? I yeah. can send. Yeah. yeah, you can send me yes. a draft. I'll put it in the report folder. Right. Okay. Um, and, then and then we can. Then people can send me comments as long as you don't talk to each other about it. Is that correct? Right. And then, right. I mean, yeah. at, at our meeting, right, we could kind of have a final pass and maybe appoint somebody, right, like and two people to do like super final and submit it by Wednesday. So great. Um, Thank you. That's fine. So. Thank you, Peggy. So everybody, do you want to put a deadline for um, getting comments on the current version or do you yes. want to? Yes, so I want comments on the current version by Thursday noon. Thursday, <laughs> I don't know, Thursday evening. Well, okay. Friday morning. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> evening, Thursday evening, you get comments on the current version that right. that's the 10.5 I sent today, I think. Okay, so yes, Thursday evening, send me comments on the current version. I will write more and incorporate whatever I hear and then try and send out a draft in order for people to read and make comments before our next meeting. Thank you, Peggy. Now, um, one thing I wanted to do before we go, um, we start to close the meeting. Um, we might have to schedule a meeting after the 18th. Right now, we don't have any meeting scheduled after the 18, um, just in case uh, we get comments uh, from either one or two meetings after the council meeting. So the council is meeting on the 18. Um, and then um, I don't know if Wednesday. We can, I can send a poll, but either Tuesday or Wednesday, either the 19th or the 20th um, to have a meeting. I'm gonna send a poll to see which day works better, but I think we have to have a meeting scheduling because we might mm -hmm. get comments. Maybe- They will have it. comments. <laughs> they, they're gonna have comments. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, um, and then, uh, yes, I have to figure out how we handle if we have comments and says change everything and we say no. no. I mean, I think I think that has to be part of the presentation, like how hard yeah. it is to change things and stuff. Yeah. And that the um, seat is happy, but yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, I think we have to have a meeting in the 19 and 20 just in case, and we have to put it in the books. And if we don't have to meet, we cancel it. But mm, so sure. far, I think we have to we have to post it. Okay. I'm gonna send a poll about that. Okay, and I guess one question is, what do you see for when it goes to the council? Do you, uh, you want to give the whole presentation? Or what do you think? <laughs> Who wants to come? We can go <laughs> on the committee or uh, we no. can have a group going to 
it would be better that it's not just me uh, if there's somebody else there. Peggy? When we did the um, ranked choice voting, our chair did the initial presentation, though it does not have to be the chair, but I think one person does the initial presentation, but then if there are questions, they can be referred to other people. So for example, if Tracy isn't doing the whole presentation, but there's questions about the data that she ran, she oh, obviously sure. would be the one, so. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna ask, I don't know, I got an invitation, but I don't know if somebody has got, D, you have a comment? So my, my comment is that, um, yeah, I could see you, Tracy, and Peggy um, being the presenters to also, you know, such as explain the rationale. Why this map? Which will be the logical question. Uh, why did you choose this map? And, and you know, uh, have some rationale to it. Um, I don't think three is overkill, you know. Um, trying to figure out between you and Peggy and uh, Tracy how to present and dividing it up in, into that, you know, uh, the three, you know, when, when it comes to the data, um, maybe Tracy presenting, um, Peggy presenting about, you know, the boundaries or, or what have you, how it was set up, the precincts and, and the districts. Um, I, anyway, I just think it would be more representative of your group as well. Tracy? Um, so I have two comments on that one. I'm not sure I'm available that night. I'm trying, but we'll see. Um, two, uh, oh, so I do, do, have you, I guess we should, or somebody should check with the council, uh, the council president about how long we expect to be given to talk because I've noticed that there are other items on their agenda. They just met last night and they went till after midnight and there were some things that they were planning to discuss at last night's meeting and they didn't get to it. And they said, oh, we'll discuss those all on the 18th. And they also have other agenda items that are already slated for the 18th. So we really do need to hear. I mean, I do hope, <laughs> that, they make, I do hope that they make it a priority. Um, I just, I mean, just to be aware, like we should, I mean, we should probably ask for at least like half an hour or something. I just, okay, I can because all email. these other items will go so long. I can so. ask for half an hour and ask that it's at but, the beginning, because if not last night, I was waiting for two and a half hours and then, then I gave up. Uh, there is one item. The reason I stayed on late is because there was an item that I was actually waiting for, for most of the meeting that I had sent a public comment on and they decided at midnight to say, oh, we're going to push that to next time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, <laughs> they could have told me, but uh, yeah. So, okay, sorry. I just, that. I mean, I'm just saying they push a lot of things. And so I just, I feel like that meeting could already be filling up. Okay, so I'm going to send an email and a request that we go at the beginning, if possible, and um, uh, fix time yeah. that they stop, okay. but then, okay. Thank you. So are we, we have, uh, I don't think we have anything else on the time on our meeting, but we have one attendee for public comment with a hand raise. If she wants to speak again. Yes. Freddie, you're in the room again. Thank you. Yes, I've been sitting here waiting. <laughs> uh, thank you all for your hard work. Um, there's just one question I have is I never could see a really good map of is version five map one version five or is it map five? You kept referring to it as map five. Or version five. Yeah, it is map one version five. And in fact, map I guess one, one, one thing, five. can we just call it like map A or our map or? Yes. I was even thinking, yeah. and even the other maps, you know, like if we even want to acknowledge that they exist, like the one George Ryan likes, we could call that like map B and map yes. C that they were rejected. I would, I would advise that. Because and that is just too, I agree, it's too, point. it's too complicated. So, um, but the map we picked the, is the map, map a. the maps of uh, map five that you showed tonight were sort of these little little. Um, they did not look. They did not have the same format as your other maps, unless you met, maybe you showed one that I didn't recognize. You you so, can find it in the packet. 
It is in the packet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's map um, one version five. But, it's we, in the but okay. we just made edits to it. So wait. <laughs> like, wait and Mike will Mike will make the changes tomorrow and they will go in the new packet for next week's meeting. Okay, that's great. And so, I wanted to say one more thing. I'm from precinct 10 and you 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 said that you had not really split any any precincts out of their uh, districts, but we have been split out of our district. So um Yes. Don't forget that. Yeah. And that's yes. a big change. That's a very big change. So I just want to add that. Um, okay. It's, yeah, I think you may be hearing more about that. I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. You I have great stamina. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think we're done now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. I move to adjourn. So, so I'm sorry, just before we adjourn, I would love to adjourn. Um, so if we're looking at any data, we're looking at, so I'll make sure, and Mike, if you just want to send me the mapping, like the, the blocks with the precincts, just to make sure like I have it all right for yep. the map one version five and what we're going to call it, are we going to call it map A or something? Sure. Can we just call sure. it map A from yes. this point map forward? Final. Final. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> so, um, and then when it gets uh, rejected, it'll be final, final, <laughs> final <laughs> version yeah. one, final, version two, <laughs> final, <laughs> really final. <laughs> okay. Maybe map A, and then it could be one, two, three. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't yes, know. Tracy. So, I mean, I'm so gonna, if, Tracy, so if I'm gonna, we were gonna, if we were gonna include any of the other ones, it would be that map three, right? Just as a comparison. Yeah. And do we still yeah. want to keep the one that Marilyn had liked? The well, I don't know, because. Or maybe we do map one version five with the original precinct pairs, just like throwing it mm -hmm. out there because people do feel so sentimental. Or do we just have I, the two I'm versions? Not, I think that's simple. I two think versions. Simple. Tracy, two versions. Tracy, okay. Tracy, the moment you offer more things, no, and if, if things are there, they say, oh, but I like this one and I like the other one. Well, we could just Everybody. say, George, is, George Ryan is going to bring up the map three and other people. Well, are, so we just have the two. Why don't we just have the map one and map three? And we'll we just, can have 10 maps if we want. No, we well, no I don't want to. I mean, as Joseph said, we don't want to show the other maps, but just to kind of show that's how how our map does it better than other maps or whatever. No, I don't know. Because I mean, do we gives, need, do, I, I don't think so, because then okay. it gives the impression that okay. Uh, there's still a contestant and okay. we... So we, uh, we, we keep that data in the backgrounds. Yes. And yes. we don't have it in our slides or anything. Okay. Not on the major presentation. We have, might have it as supplemental information that okay. you don't show right. if okay. somebody asks. And that's part of the reason in if somebody asks why they got this card or why we come up with this one. It's yes, I understand. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. So... Peggy had made a motion. Yes, I second it. I second. OK. okay. Uh, Teresa Safian? Uh, aye, yeah. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Mahek Galliani? Aye. Joseph Gordon? Aye. Irene Hovne? Aye. Meeting at All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>